Ah, good morning, everyone. Uh, bonjour à toutes et tous. Uh, buenos dias. Uh, buongiorno. Uh, guten Tag. Uh, guten Morgen. Uh, a warm welcome to you all from uh, wherever you find yourself this morning or maybe this afternoon or this evening. Mm. You know, the thought of uh, all of us joining right here, right now, from different part of the world, uh, really brings up a deep sense of uh, connection, uh, really. You may just notice, you may hear some kind of sounds behind, it's because the cat in the house, he's having his moment right now, and he's running all over the places. So apologies for this, if uh, this is bringing any disturbance, but it might, might stop quickly. Um, so warm welcome again on the uh, Sangha Life uh, daily sit. Uh, we are extremely privileged uh, to have this uh, uh, morning session. And as you know, they're, um, they're offered freely. And if you would like, wish to support uh, Sangha Life, people were really giving their time so generously uh, for the platform. And also, if you would like to support the teacher, you will find on the top of uh, the chat uh, the link uh, to donate so that this session can uh, go on uh, smoothly. So um, my gratitude uh, in advance uh, for your kind generosity. I'm not sure if I wait because I, I, I still see some people uh, arriving slowly. Mm. But yeah, anyway, yeah, let's start. Yeah, people will join uh, and lend into this uh, moment. You know, just settling in the posture that uh, feels the most um, appropriate for us this morning. You know, sometimes we, we come to practice, we come to sit, and we, we just don't take the time to inquire what this body, what does this mind, what it needs this morning. You know, we just sit and like have it sitting on the same chair, sitting on the same cushion, without inquiring that maybe this morning, I don't know, there's a bit more fatigue or uh, the body is more tense or rigid and it requires maybe an adjustment in our posture. So we don't even, even before settling, just uh, what, what kind of posture is the most appropriate this morning to support, you know, this balance between a balance between alertness and a deep sense of uh, relaxation or maybe release. And again, a warm welcome for the late comers this morning. Yeah, just taking the time just to sit or to lie down. Maybe to being aware that right here, right now, for the next 60 minutes, this is a time for myself, a time to be with myself, a space where there is Ooh, nowhere to go, nothing to achieve, no role to take, no specific identity. It's just taking the seat.
to us, this moment has never happened before and will never happen again. Just connecting with the preciousness of it, with the uniqueness of it. And realizing that life is happening, unfolding, not in the past, not in the, in the future, near or far. But life is right here, right now. Experiencing this life through sensing and hearing, seeing, touching, tasting, thinking. You could just simply connecting with this body in connection with maybe the chair or the bed, the mat, the floor. And this body in connection with the element of earth. Maybe at first, you know, having a sense that there is the earth and this body, you know, separated from it. Just connecting with it, through the, the feet, on the ground, the body lying down. But as awareness, you know, slowly landing in this experience, maybe this sense of separation start to be more fuzzy, unclear. You know, where to start my feet, where and the ground. You know, experientially, this becomes quite relative, a sense of separation. Start to loosen, maybe to dissolve. You know, meeting with the earthy components of this body.
its solidity, its weight. You know, time as an ally. As it sometimes takes time for things to settle, for this mind to slowly land. You know, anchoring whether on the body sensations, more specifically, or on the in and out of the breath, or maybe the sound. But whatever feels appropriate, whatever feels right for you this morning and this moment.
What is the experience of this moment is made of? What's being experienced right now? Sense of ease, of spaciousness, of non-reactivity, Who is the mind busy? Busy maybe in trying to manage what is going on. You're just noticing what's here. Without trying to fix anything or to keep something alive. Just acknowledging what's here and feel the texture of it. How does it feel? And breathe in there. reality of this moment as it is. Is there a willingness to meet what's here? Or is there already a contraction an attempt to manage, to control. To do things. And just noticing the difference. When we find ourselves in one space or the other. Just feel the difference.
The whole massa, the experience of an in breath from beginning to end. Home as a sound arising. Being here for a while. And as its own pace. Fading away. Home in the sensation of this body lying down or sitting inhabiting the space being in space not separated from its environment Home in this unshakable presence to the unfolding of life.
from that home space. That space of uh, contentment, maybe where peace is. Sometime emerge a feeling of gratitude. Gratitude as there is just releasing no contraction toward the reality of this moment. Gratitude for sharing this moment together. How it makes a difference in our lives. How it brings meaning. How it brings a sense of connections with one another. Maybe this is something we would like to offer to someone that matters to us. It could be a friend, a loved one, family. Share this feeling of gratitude Wishing our loved ones experience the same.
gratitude for this abundance that is here. And there is no attempt to change your control or manage the reality of this moment. There is just present to what we already are. And at your own rhythm, opening the eyes. Being attuned to the need of this body. Maybe it requires a bit of a stretch, a sigh. Posture adjustment. You know, and like yesterday, using these time of transitioning from one posture to the other to to give this moment uh, with presence, with awareness to what's happening in this transitioning time. <laughs> hey man, yeah, this is Sally. <laughs> Sally, which seems uh, to be a little bit entertained this morning, or maybe you have um, some interest for the Dharma. Hi. 
Um, you got a high. Um, you've been pondering and reflecting as some uh, comments came up yesterday. <laughs> yeah, what cats do. And I would like to offer or, <laughs> you know, something in response to these comments. Already at least uh, an attempt to give uh, an orientation around that. Usually we come to practice um, with an intention, with an aspiration. They might differ from each one of us. But in a certain way, this intention can be seen as a uh, as the drive to to real to to understand reality as it is, you know, and in a way, there is a kind of a dynamic of of doing here. We're doing something in in having an intention or aspiring to something, returning towards something, toward a goal. But as we know, there is another dynamic at play that we could call, I've, I've used the word this week, releasing, but could be called as well, surrendering, allow, allowing. And there are also this kind of, of texture of, of doing in that in the same time. And this allowance and surrender and release uh, could be seen as the, the acknowledgement of what happens naturally in the course of our experience. And in this attitude, there is really nothing to do. Nothing to do to be what we already are. And this reality, I said yesterday, uh, does not need that we fix something about ourselves in the moment. But often <laughs> uh, we find ourselves more busy yeah, going against the stream. Yeah, often we find ourselves so busy trying to make us feel okay or trying to understand more than what's here or trying to avoid or, or trying to stop. Yeah. You know, all these moments that there is this part of us that take control. And I guess this speaks to all of us. And it can take, of course, many different shapes. And what maybe requires attention here is to see when there is this attempt to control, no matter what shapes it takes, there is not a certain belief that lies behind this. A belief that usually that is completely remain unseen, remain unrecognized. Yeah. And the belief actually that I am I am separate from reality. You know, and, and this is really not easy to catch. Uh, it can be very subtle. You know, in a way, I'm, I'm, I may be aware of this sense of separation, I feel separated. And in that awareness, is there, you know, I'm aware I feel separated, but is there, you know, lying right behind the surface, this attempt to manage things when this comes up? And again, this can take many shapes that really needs to be Learn to be recognized and seen. 
you know, really learning to realize that when we find ourselves in these spaces, we already have taken something to be true. I'm separated from reality, for example. But you, you know, bringing really a sense of inquiry here. Is it really true that there is something here that has to react and to contract and to control experience? You know, that in a way it has to manage its life in a certain way. So that, so, that, that things, they, they, they come out a certain way. Uh, or that things move toward a certain direction, the direction that we want it goes to. And again, this is this is very very subtle, and 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 this to be to be extremely cautious when engaging oneself there, really, to, to, because it's really it really requires a deep sense of care, a deep sense of care. And and uh, and kindness, but if if there is the recognition, you know, of this movement, how does this feel to be in control there? You know, how does it feel? Is it uncomfortable? Can we stay there? Yesterday I mentioned, you know, the Vedana, the, 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 the tone, the feeling tone. Can we just stay there for a while? And how does it feel like actually to not do anything with the mind? What is here? Not trying to make it otherwise or different. To stay with this perception of this you know it's it's very interesting it's really to see for yourself when we when we come into contact with that part that feels like it always has to react to something or that attempt to change reality when we really come into contact with that part Simultaneously, we find access to peace again. You know, silence, this kind of unmoving equanimity. You know, a, a kind of, I don't know if this is right, correct in English, kind of an undifferentiated place that is profoundly enjoyable. Ian. And coming back to that and stay there unmoving. You know, this, this presence, this reality that is always available, that is always with us. Not separate. That's all I wanted to share this morning. You know, really learning to recognize when there is a belief that is not seen. You know, this belief that I am separate from reality that gives rise, rise, you know, to all this this trying to manage, this trying to fix, this trying to be otherwise, this trying to control everything. Just learning to recognize this subtle, you know, belief that really lies behind the surface and, and come to meet it, to meet it experientially, not with our head. Feeling it and stay there. And see what's going on, see what happens when there is the contact with that space. Undifferentiated awareness, kind of difficult word to pronounce. <laughs> yeah.
Thank you for listening. If there is any comment or questions or, you know, just the longing to share something this morning, I may not have anything to do with what has just been said or done. Hi, Janet. Yeah, question. Can you say a little more about the Vedana, please? Okay. Uh, Vedana, mm, it's multiple translation in English. The one I know is feeling tone, um, hedonic tone, sometimes Akinsha knows using as a translation. Um, Vedana is very different from an emotion. Vedana, uh, you know, in Buddhist psychology, Vedana appears uh, at a certain time. The way Buddhist psychology explains how this mind works is that as a human being, we're experiencing the world through our senses. We see, we hear, we touch, we feel, we taste, we think. Thinking is also one sense in Buddhist psychology. And when we come, one of these senses come into contact, for example, the hearing sense, uh, going to come into contact with a, with a sound coming from outside or coming from inside. We call this contact. And from this contact, there is a Vedana that arises. It's very, it's very fast, mm -hmm. but it's a very interesting place to really bring some attention. Vedana, uh, there can be three kinds of Vedana. Whether the tone of an experience, you hear a sound, the sound of a car, for example, well, it's very unpleasant. The tone is unpleasantness. Or you hear the sound of a bird, oh, it's pleasant, or there is neither pleasantness nor unpleasantness, so what we usually call neutral tone. And what is interesting for us is to really come to catch that moment, to stay, you know, oh, flower, pleasant, 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 pleasant. And like any other experience, the Vedana tone is going to, to fall away as well. And it's interesting to stay with that because this is really the moment right after the feeling tone that the mind tends to react to things, you know, to grasp, grasping in different ways when it's pleasant, to try to keep alive, to make something pleasant lasting. Or if the sound of a call is very unpleasant, the reaction toward that Vedana will be to try to stop it, to avoid it. I don't want it. And this, you know, in these two movements, this reactivity usually gives rise to one thought that will give rise to multiple ones afterward. And this is what we call, we identify with something. We're building up a story upon just a reality of a pleasant tone, of an unpleasant tone. And once we're there, you know, in this thinking mode, there is this sense of being disconnected with the reality. So this is why it's so interesting uh, to learn, to get used to, to really to catch this moment, because if we stay in this feeling tone sensation, you know, uh, we, we, Disengage, you know, we, we stop feeding this habit to react. And this can be really profoundly free. I hope this gives a bit of a, a texture to your question. Um, 
Jane. Uh, Laura, one question as well. Does this undifferentiated awareness mean that we naturally do what is right without thinking? Well, that's an interesting question. Does this undifferentiated awareness mean that we naturally do? Yeah, you know, I'm not sure what to respond. Uh, I would say that when there is presence, when things, you know, the stream of experience forming and disappearing uh, uh, is just recognized as it is um, and that there is no reactivity to it, that there is no attempt to control Could we say this is right? This is just what it is. So isn't it, you know, this, this concept of right or not right is still here. On one level, I would say it's right. And on one level, level you say we naturally do. There is a kind of a doing. But at the same time, in that space, is there really any doing at all? You know, it's just that space of releasing. And on one level, there is a doing. On right level, this is right. But on another level, is this concept of doing, this concept of right or wrong, still exist? I just let you see for yourself. <laughs> I don't know if this brings something, Laura. <laughs> Surely what comes to this is, uh, oh gosh, George, what is this photo? <laughs> uh, actually, when we find in this undifferentiated space, it really feels, there is this sense of, I don't know if the word in English will be correct. Completedness is something that is complete. Nothing needs to be removed. Nothing needs to be added. It's just, it's just this. <laughs> yeah, thank you to Sally to have been with us. And uh, thank you to all for this morning and uh, for this wonderful week and uh, morning uh, sessions with all of you. I remind you of the donate button on the chat and uh, wishing you um, a fruitful and meaningful day or evening or a good night. And... Uh, And uh, hopefully uh, we see each other tomorrow. Thank you.